few moments. Uh, Lance, this is Carlos with the Voice newspaper. One of the things you are considered the, um, the ambassador to the sport, one of the things that we noticed that you were doing different is every day you get on Twitter, right before a race or right after the race, and you and you write to the thousands and thousands of fans that you have. Um, pretty in innovative and, and keeping, you're giving the cycling community, all the uh, fans, a uh, different way, you're giving it a, a real human touch because they're hearing it straight from you as it, as it happens. Do you know if any other cyclists are actually doing that as well? I keep hearing about Twitter, but I've, honest, I've never done it. I don't know who's doing it. That's a joke. That's, yeah, I'm kidding. So, yeah, you get these people to write, is this really you? Like, no, the picture I just took of myself, that's not me. Uh, I, you know, the, 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 this, the, Levi is doing it. So we had a little contest yesterday. I said, you know, Levi's, I'm on Twitter. He says, give me a shout out. I said, okay, I'll give you a shout out. Let's see. And then we were betting on how many followers he would get. And I said, you'll have 5,000 in 24 hours. How many did you get in 24 hours? 8,000. 8,000. So we, I, I, lost, I lost the bet. Um, you know, I, I think it serves a, a couple of purposes. You know, it, 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 um, from my foundation's perspective, there's a lot of stuff that we, there's stories there that we can tell. And there's, if we need help with something, I mean, at the end of the day, we're a nonprofit organization, you, you need people's help. You need them to come out and volunteer, you need them to come out and do rides, you need them to, to read a great article that will affect, hopefully affect their lives. You can immediately broadcast that to, to hundreds of thousands of people, whoever's following. The other thing, too, is that I think in the, in, in, in the past 10 years, Perhaps our life, and I say our life, I mean the life of Johan and I, has been, uh, has seemed to be sort of secretive. And there's been this element of what are those guys up to? Where are they? What are they doing? I don't know. I don't think I trust them. And, and, and that's frustrating because we were up to nothing but busting our ass and working hard and went and trying to win the Tour de France every year. Um, so, so it came along, and some guys at the foundation said, You should try this. Uh, they all snickered because they thought I would do it for a day or two. Um, but I think, it, and I've talked a lot about transparency, and, and, and for me, although it's not you know, having somebody drive around with you 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, it's as transparent as I can be because there's a lot of things that I can't do. I mean, I can't, I can't go over to Starbucks and sit there and have a coffee with, with 20 other people, although I do sometimes. I can't go down to the bar and, and, and drink beer with you know, 100 other guys. It doesn't work. It, it becomes, it, it's a scene. So, it's a, it's a way for me to just tell people what's going on. And I think, I think some people see it and they think, the guy's building a, a, you know, he's building a Pinewood Derby car with his son? Well, that sounds awfully normal. Or he's taking his kids to the church play, or he's, or he's, he's talking about the music he likes, or he's, uh, you know, the hell, whatever. I, I put everything on there. And so he, he, people look at it and they go, that guy sounds pretty normal. And, 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 you know, this, this comeback, I was very clear that, that we would try to, uh, to be open and honest and transparent. And, and, and while you can't sit down and talk with everybody, at least it gives you something that, that there's no way to think that, that anything mischievous is going on. And, uh, you know, as, as far as the, even if you talk about doping, it's like, and doping and support, the, the most important thing is the whereabouts. Um, you know, all you got to do is look at my Twitter. I mean, every hour, I tell you, you know exactly where I am, so. Um, it's, been, it's, been, it's been interesting, and, and I'm a little depressed that Britney Spears is ahead of me, but uh, <laughs> she doesn't update hers very often, it's other people. Um, I'm neck and neck with the New York Times, which I think is cool. Uh, no, it, it, but it's been good. It's been good. Levi's on it, and another guy, George, is on it. Mick Rogers, Mick Rogers asked me in the race, he's like, Give me a shout out on Twitter. Uh, all the young guys on our U23. Johan is on it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Johan's on. Everybody's on there. And, and it, it's, you know, it's viral. It's cool. It, it gets people out. People start yelling about Twitter postings all the time. It's, it's amazing. So it's been a good thing. And no, I do not own a piece of Twitter. I get that question a lot. I wish I did, but I don't. Don't call me. Don't call CBS San Diego. I got a question for both you guys, uh, Levi Lance. I want you to talk about that uh, Palomar climb and how that compares to the mountains around the world. Um, it's it's legit. 
It's, uh, it's, 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 it's 12 miles long and it goes up to over 5,000 feet. It's, it's um, very, very similar to something that we would see in Europe. Very steady, consistent. Um, there's not a lot of climbs in the entire United States like that. So, uh, you know, it's hard, very hard. I think I would add that, you know, with the speed that we went up and the riders that we were surrounded with, especially the last few kilometers, I had to remind myself that it was February in California because it felt like it was the Alps in July. It was, like you said, it was legit.